Hi girls and boys! Welcome back to the Parsha Studio. In Parsha's Piku Day, we learned that the special garments of the Kohanim were made, including the Choshen Mishpat that the Kohen Gadol wore. Today we are going to make a Choshen craft using a creative method you'll find out about soon. Here are the supplies that we will need. Gold cardstock, wooden mixing sticks, small plastic tray covers, six cardstock cards, here we used ones that are three by one and a half inches, scissors, water, seven colors of nail polish, clear nail polish, a glue stick, tape, and a piece of ribbon or string. Let's begin. Cut each card in half so that you have 12 half cards in the shape of a smaller rectangle. These are going to be the 12 precious stones on our pretend Choshen. Did you know there are all sorts of secret languages? For example, Morse code is a language using dots and dashes that translate into letters. Fill one of the small plastic trays with water about three quarters of the way to the top and add several drops of clear nail polish. All of this talk about secret languages might sound random, but you'll soon understand why I'm bringing this up. Next choose one or two colors of colored nail polish and add a few drops to the mixture. Using one of the wooden sticks, swirl the colors to make a design in the water with the nail polish. Take one of the cards and dip it into and under the nail polish that is in the water, pulling it out directly from under the floating nail polish so the card catches the design. You can repeat this step until you like how the card looks, then put it on the side to set and dry. Repeat these steps for each of the other cards using different colors each time until all 12 cards are designed and look like another type of precious stone. Morse code is just one example, but many other languages or codes use shapes, numbers, and other signs. Many such codes may look silly or seem unclear, but if we had the correct tools, we would be able to crack the codes and read the messages. Aside from being one of the Kohen Gadol's garments, the Choshen also served the purpose of helping the Yidin communicate with Hashem through a type of code. The Choshen was a piece of cloth woven of many beautiful colors and across the front there were 12 different gems, corresponding to the 12 Shvatim. Each gem had the name of a Sheva inscribed on it. Once the cards are mostly dry, use the glue stick to stick them onto the gold sheet of cardstock in a pattern of three rows of four stones each. When you are done, cut off any excess paper that goes beyond the space where the paper stones are glued. These stones weren't only for decoration, but when the Yidin were in doubt about something, Hashem would cause some of the letters on the gems of the Choshen to light up. The letters had to be rearranged for the message to become clear. It was like a code that the Kohen Gadol had to crack. We can learn something very special from this. A stone can't grow, think, or do much besides sit there, but it can sparkle and shine, and in this case of the Choshen, even become one of the ways Hashem communicated with the Yidin. Lastly, use a couple of pieces of tape to attach a length of ribbon to the back to make it into a necklace that can be worn around the neck. When we talk to Hashem, when we daven, it is possible to feel that our words are dead or boring, like a motionless stone, but if we say them with excitement and life, then each word of our tefillos becomes like a sparkling, shining gem. One way to help us get there is to understand what we are saying. Knowing what a tefillah means can help us connect with the tefillah. Let it completely dry and then it is all finished. Enjoy your Hoshan craft and we'll see you next week.